Nice. Here go, baby. I thought it was the point of the orange. <laughs> We're still on great. We're out. I just wanted to know which one of you is Ken Hooker. <laughs> Actually, I am Potty. Well, that's what it says. <laughs> <laughs> the voice behind the man, eh? Well, of, an, co of course. That's about. <laughs> <laughs> Audie's full of jokes tonight, isn't he? Oh, boy, you don't know. <laughs> I know, I'm tired. I've had two of my grandkids for the last two days and trying to juggle two jobs. It, it's I'm old. <laughs> <laughs> it gets old quick, doesn't it? <laughs> I don't know how I did it with five little ones. Oh, you survived it. You can survive this. And have about 50 more gray hairs, but I'll survive it. Yeah, there's always color. <laughs> I mean, look at me. <laughs> yeah, but gray for a man is okay. Oh, my wife says bald for men is okay. That no. too. Pardon? I said that too, but my husband would never go for that. I shaved my head. I've had her razor shave my head. <laughs> hair is hair. It grow back, and if it don't, I didn't need it anyway. Good morning, Mary. Afternoon, Mary. Evening. Hello. Wherever it is. Counselor Kenya. Yeah. Hello. Hi. Hi there. Are we on? The meeting hasn't started yet. It's 6.55. I don't know. Mayor said hi, and that was it. Oh, Chief, don't look so serious. Smile, it makes us wonder what you've been up to.
It looks like we're going to have a quorum. Well, Mayor, it looks like it's seven up. And we have a quorum. Thank you, Audie. I'm just reading over my notes. Call this meeting to order at 7 p.m. February 3rd. Brian, are you on? Uh, we're on here in City Hall. Perfect. We can start out with the Pledge of Allegiance. Okay. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We go ahead with roll call. Councillor Bjarnson. Councillor Whitney. Councillor Coker. Here. Mayor Hollett. Here. Councillor Kenyon. Here. Councillor Splitoff. Here, and it looks like uh, Councillor Bjornsson is online, not muted. I mean, Councillor Bjornsson. Councillor Whitney. Here. Thank you. Thank you, Jackie. First item on the agenda is uh, additions, corrections, or adjustments to the agenda. Counselors, do you have anything or Brian? I do. Go ahead, Counselor Kenyon. I wanted to add an update on the audit. 
Uh, would you like to put that under business of city administration or council? Oh, city council. I, I've got a email I can read. Okay, so let's go ahead and add 9.1 um, update regarding audit. Anything else, counselors? Brian, did you have anything? I see you already added the RTMP update on there. Yeah, it was on the original agenda. I just uh, I forwarded out the uh, the background information and the program uh, separately uh, yesterday, I believe, but nothing else to add. Perfect. Okay. Um, public comment. I'm going to look through my list here. Brian, do you have anyone in the audience for public comment? If there's anyone on the Zoom that would like to speak for public comment, you can go ahead and raise your hand. And if you can't find that feature, just go ahead and uh, turn your mute button off and um, say your name and I can acknowledge you. All right, I'm looking through the Zoom and I don't see anybody for public comment. Uh, you have a hand with uh, Trudy Hammond. Okay, go ahead, Trudy. Hey, sorry about that. I got a clap and a hand up there. Oh, there we go. <laughs> um, I was wondering about the position for the vacant seats. It's my understanding there's two vacant council seats and, and how did that come about? So there's, um, I understand the one vacant seat, but how did we get the second one? There's only, there's only one vacant council seat. There's only one. Okay. Okay. I'm cleared up now. Okay. Anything else? You got like two and a half more minutes. <laughs> okay. Anyone? In the <laughs> well, <laughs> oh, uh, no one at city hall uh, is, re is ready to comment. Okay, and I don't see anyone else on the Zoom. So, okay, let's go ahead and go into. Mayor go ahead. Oh, sorry. That was an accident. Okay. Uh, we're going to go into item number six mayor comments, announcements, and proclamations. And I have a couple things. Um, so, a couple comments to go. Um, first one I have. Let me pull up my notes. Um, health fair. So in years past, uh, the fire department has put on a health fair, um, gosh, for 30 plus years, um, probably longer. And in the last time they partnered with um, St. Vincent de Paul and Gina Baines. I believe that was in 2016. I could be off on that. And so that's the last time we've had a health fair and we're working on putting another one together. And so we're trying to actually partner with the city this time, um, Gina Baines and the fire department and Orchid Health and the city of Oak Ridge would be the three main uh, partners to be putting that together. We've met a couple times now. Um, our target date is July 16th and we are hoping to schedule that at um, Greenwaters Park. It would be a little larger event than what we've had in the past. For those of you that remember, uh, traditionally they have been at the elementary gymnasium. So we're gonna try to do it in the summer um, at the park, take advantage of the amphitheater. Uh, we're working on getting a couple guest speakers, um, probably someone doing a cardiology. Um, we have a cardiologist that we're hoping to have come speak and he spoke for us before but there might be a couple other physicians and health related guest speakers um a community cpr class um gosh we're hoping to do blood draws all sorts of health stuff um eye exams the blood mobile um there's just a whole list but i was hoping that council would um mark that date in the calendar as july 16th there's definitely going to be a lot of volunteers needed for setup and just all sorts of things. And it would be really great if we could have a strong 
um, council pres uh, presence there. And um, anybody that's interested in being a part of it, we're um, making calls now and getting um, team players together to put that together. Yeah. I do yeah. believe that yeah. there will be um, some type of waiver uh, asked um, of the city since this is kind of a nonprofit event, um, a, a community related one. I'm not sure. Um, I think that's the only thing that they're going to ask for is a, um, a fee waiver, but that should be coming shortly. And Bobby, you had your hand up. Go ahead. Um, yeah, I was just wondering who is taking the lead on this. So who's in charge of setting it up? Um, well, those four partners are kind of sponsoring it, not kind of, they are sponsoring it together. So in the past, it was the fire department. And then the last round, the fire department and Gina Baines with St. Vincent de Paul did it together. And so this year it is um, the fire department, St. Vincent de Paul. I would say Gina Baines is really the top person and then her main partners would be the fire department, Orchid Health. And um, I'm hoping that the city of Oak Ridge wants to be a partner um, in it. And our partnering um, really is just us, you know, getting out there and um, being involved in the event. It's going to take a lot of hands. Um, and um, the fee waiver would be, in my opinion, a way for us to kind of sponsor it and, and put our put our um, interest out there. Mm -hmm. So those would be the, the four main partners, but, um, you know, we have like White Bird and um, Lane County. I know, Bobby, your name's on the list. If you haven't been contacted already, I know I'm positive your name's on the list um, for senior services. But um, yeah, we have a lot of new ideas this year. One of them was um, trying to find um, an agency like Ride Source that would help um, getting people into town for their doctor's appointments and those kind of visits that are um, not really emergent but still need to happen. So, actually, you know what? I actually have a volunteer program for that and I'm looking for volunteers. So no. if you know anybody that's interested. Well, if Gina Baines hasn't contacted you already, I'm sure she will be. Okay. okay. Um, so if you guys have any questions, please ask them now, or you can email me and um, yeah, I'll try to, I'll try to update at least once a month until we're at the, the, um, until the event happens. And again, that is Saturday, July 16th. That's our target date. Councillor Coker. Um, I can also be in contact with the people that run the Diamond Express, if that would help to possibly arrange for a bus ride for people that want to come up, I would be willing to donate my time to do that. Okay. That, that actually might help. Um, I'll put, I'll put um, your name down for Gina Baines. Okay. And what was that date again? July uh, 16th. That's a Saturday. Okay. Thank you. Okay. All right. So that's, that's for the health fair. And then the next thing I wanted to mention was I have been talking to Lauren Michaels with the Spotlight Theater and kind of um, trying to learn about their program. I've been there for a couple events now and just um, trying to figure out um, what all they're doing there and all the updates that they're making to the theater. Um, and in talking with him, it just was a really positive conversation. And I thought that, um, the information might um, be really valuable to all the counselors to hear um, what they're doing there, the renovations, the things they're trying to do to fix it up, and then also how they're trying to open it up to the community for other events to be held there. So in talking to him, at first I asked if he would be willing to do a council walkthrough where we all could kind of walk through and see what's been done and what their plans are. And then after talking to him, I thought, well, gosh, you know, um, maybe we could do more of an open house type thing where the community could come in and see what they're doing and what they're trying to um, build it into being 
and he really liked the idea. So he talked to his people there and they're going to hold an open house on the 23rd of February. And so that'll be open to all counselors and community. And they're going to do a walkthrough, show us some of the projects that they've been working on and um, talk a little bit about the spotlight theater and then talk a little bit about um, the opportunities that are going to be available for that theater there once they're a little more complete um, with some of the projects that they're working on. So again, that is February 23rd. I am so sorry I don't have a time on that, but I believe he said 6 p.m. So um, he said after tonight, if the council um, seemed excited about that, they would go ahead and post that. And um, and yeah, get that out there. So I think it makes more sense that we all should be probably looking for an invitation um, or maybe an advertisement on um, their website or their Facebook page. Is there any questions about that? What was they date again? February 23rd. Somewhere around 6, 6 p.m.? I believe so. When I see the event, I'll try to send it out. Thank you. Any questions on that? Okay. All right, so next thing I have is announcements. And the first announcement tonight is I want to recognize a Medal of Honor citation. Um, this was recognized and there's actually a monument at Greenwaters Park for Maximo Yabes. And um, it was, from my understanding, it was recognized that the first meeting in February each year we would recognize him. And so I went and did a little research on him and I wanted to read that to the council. And I'll go ahead and paste this also on social media too so that the community who doesn't know about it will know about it. Oak Ridge is designated as a Medal of Honor city for Maximo Yabes and a plaque was placed in 2018 at Greenwaters Park. Maximo Yabes, 1st Sergeant, U.S. Army, Company A, 4th Battalion, 9th Infantry, 25th Infantry Division. Maximo Yabes, born January 29, 1932 and died February 26, 1967 was a United States Army soldier who received the Medal of Honor for the United States highest military decoration for his actions near Phu Hao Dong in South Vietnam during the Vietnam War. Yabes distinguished himself when he used his body as a shield to protect others in a bunker. At a young age, he moved with his family to Oak Ridge, Oregon, where he received his primary and secondary education. In 1950, he dropped out of Oak Ridge High School and joined the United States Army. By 1967, Yabes was a first sergeant with a total of 17 years in the Army. He was assigned to Company A, 4th Battalion, 9th Infantry of the 25th Inch Infantry Division in South Vietnam. The division had been stationed at, oh, I hope I can pronounce this one right, Ku Chi Base Camp, northwest of Saigon, since January 1966. Yabe's company, Alphany Company, was assigned to protect a squad of army engineers whose assignment was to bulldoze a swath between the village and a plantation. The objective of this assignment was to deny the enemy ambushers and snipers, the protective cover, the lush of the jungles. On February 26, 1967, 
Waves of Viet Cong attacked Company A's position, blowing whistles and laying down deadly automatic weapon fire. The Viet Cong who penetrated the barbed wire perimeter hurled grenades towards the commander bunker. Yabes ran inside the bunker and covered its occupants with his body, all the while receiving wounds from numerous grenade fragments. Yabes then moved to another bunker with a grenade launcher, fired upon the enemy, halting a further penetration of the perimeter. Yabes then assisted two fallen comrades before he noticed the enemy machine gun within the perimeter, which threatened the whole position. Yabes then proceeded to attack the enemy machine gun crew. He was able to kill the entire crew before falling mortally wounded. 24 American soldiers and over 113 Viet Cong were killed in the attack. Secretary of the Army Stanley Rezor presented Yabe's wife and children with the Medal of Honor in a ceremony held at the Pentagon in October 1968. First Sergeant Maximo Yabe's was buried with full military honors at Fort Logan National Cemetery in Denver, Colorado. Dozens of individuals, businesses, and organizations in Oak Ridge, Oregon, donated time, money, labor, and supplies to build a memorial to honor Yabes. They hired a sculptor, Tim Outman, to create the memorial, which features a fountain, a flagpole, and a bronze bust with the likeliness of Yabes set in a granite pedestal. Engraves on the base of the details of Yabes Medal of Honor. The memorial is located in Oak Ridge at Greenwaters Park. First Sergeant Yabe's valiant and selfless actions saved the lives of many of his fellow soldiers and inspired his comrades to effectively repel the enemy assault. His fighting spirit, extraordinary courage, and intrepidity at the cost of his life are in the highest military traditions and reflect great credit upon himself and the armed forces of this country. Max Yabe's is only one of 11 Oregonians to be awarded the Medal of Honor. Max Yabes is one of America's greatest heroes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. There's a lot of information to be found about him online and I actually found it really neat um, to read about that. And thank you, uh, Dan Barclay for making sure that I knew about that. That is all that I have for mayor comments, announcements. Councilors, do you have any comments or announcements? Melissa Bjarnson? Yeah, I just wanted to put on the record that I am here in attendance. I have been since the beginning, but it was, Zoom was not allowing me to unmute myself. So I was able to leave and come back and now I can. So thank you. Thank you. Any more counselor comments? Okay, let's go on to business from the city, or we don't have any consent agenda. So business from city council 9.1 audit update. Oh, I'm sorry, Councillor Kenyon, or Councillor Coker, you have your hand raised, go ahead. Um, I just wanted to put on record that I've had a few business owners contact me as far as um, the safe, the PSF, and also they're bill being billed twice for water and sewer. So I was wondering who I talked to about that. Brian, are you able to answer that? Yeah, you have them contact uh, City Hall, uh, Leah Brewer directly, and she can do some research on the accounts to figure out what happened with the billing if, if there's an error there. Okay, I'll do that. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Coker. Go ahead, Councillor Kenyon. Um, okay, so I checked with the state of Oregon again about the audit because we were issued a um, sorry, the word is slipping my mind, but uh, extension. extension, thank you. 
we were issued an extension for the month of January and we were um, expecting to see the audit at tonight's meeting actually being um, presented by the auditing company, but I found out online it still hasn't been submitted to the state of Oregon yet, so I emailed the auditors and asked, and I got this reply. Good afternoon, Councillor Kenyon. We apologize for the delays of the audit report. We had a few issues contacting or getting responses from Eric and providing requested materials that pushed us beyond our allotted time frame for interim and final testing that we allot for each client. As a result, we had to juggle finishing audit work for clients who got us the requested materials on time and performing tests for the city that should have been done earlier in the year. We have completed the testing and have the financial statements mostly completed. We are now waiting on our compliance to review and resolve a few variances. Again, we do apologize for the delay in presenting the financials as of now, we do not anticipate having to file another extension, but if that becomes more urgent, we will do so at that time. Joseph Jacobson, auditor. That's all I had. Thank you, Councillor Kenyon. All right, next item up on the agenda is business from city administration. Before we get started, I'll ask Council. Um, we have two applicants for the Library Board, and in the past, you've uh, let them go early in the agenda so they can get out of here. Uh, one of them is here in City Hall. The other, I believe, will be online. Uh, wondering if you wanted to to uh, to do that before I get started. I would like to do them if everyone else is okay with that. Yeah, I think that's not. a good idea. I'm good. I'm okay. Okay, great. All right, then I'll, uh, I'll get started here to introduce it. Uh, hang on. Lost my spot here. Okay, uh, so we're here to consider the appointment of uh, actually a couple of citizens to the committee. Um, it's item 15.1. Uh, the submitted applications were included in the council packet. Uh, we're looking for a motion from the floor to appoint uh, an applicant or applicants into the vacant positions. Uh, if you look, there's the summary of uh, the applicants and the vacancies terms. Uh, no fiscal impact. Your choices are to appoint or not appoint uh, one or more of the applicants or recommending appointing uh, and the motions before you. Uh, so Sir, uh, what's your name? My name is Terry Deloach. So Terry Deloach is here in the city hall and uh, I'll see if Mr. Andrew Leach is in uh, virtual world here, hang on. Mr. Leach, if you're there, will you speak up? You may not have been able to make it, so I, I guess we can consider uh, Mr. Deloach if you'd like to do that. Yes, please. Do any counselors have questions for Mr. Deloach? Go ahead, Councillor Spleloff. I have one of uh, our city administrator. Uh, it says down here, uh, library board for term expiring 1231 of 23. Uh, we've got a three year position open and a two year position. Right. What's your question? So three years from now, it's going to be longer than 23. Uh, well, we're into the year already. So, so one for 23, one for 24. Okay. But down at the bottom, it says, I recommend the motion. And then down there on below it, it says 1231 23. 
counselor school off, it's because one year of the term has already been used. Okay, so I, I was just getting at that date, it, the date would be different. I think is what it is, is the ending date is the same, but on one of the terms, it's a full three-year term and the other one is a partial term left over with only two years left on the term. Is that correct, Brian? Yes. Yeah, so if, if in this case, Mr. Deloach is queued up for the three-year term, that the correct motion would actually be 2024. Thank okay. You. Counselor Whitney, do you have a question? Go ahead. Actually, I don't have a question. I was just going to make a motion. Sorry if you hear Abby, she's laughing at a video. Um, I move that we appoint Mr. Terry Deloach to serve on the Oak Ridge Library Board for a term expiring 12 31 2024. I'll second, I'll second that. Second. Motion made by Councillor Whitney and seconded by Councillor Kenyon. Do we have any questions for Mr. Deloach? I'll go ahead and ask one. Um, hi, Mr. Deloach, thank you for applying. Thank you for your interest in serving the community. Um, could you just tell us what your interest is on the library board? Well, I have a lifelong interest in books and I think probably a library is probably the best place to indulge that. I would agree. <laughs> Councilor Kenyon? Yes, I wanted to ask Terry, um, how long have you lived in Oak Ridge? Well, I'm unusual when I was actually born here. Oh, that was a long excellent. time ago. Pardon? That was 62 years ago. Excellent. Thank you. And thank you for volunteering. Councillor Spleloff? Yes, I was very impressed with your uh, information you gave us. Impressed. So I think you'd be a good fit. Thank you. Any more questions? Oh boy. Okay, call for the vote, Jackie. <clears throat> Councilor Kenyon. Aye. Mayor Hollett. Aye. Councilor Whitney. Aye. Councilor Bjarnson. Aye. Councilor Spleedoff. Aye. Councillor Coker. Aye. Motion carried. Thank you, Mr. Deloach. All right, uh, we can go back to uh, 10.1 if we're ready. Um, just to give you a brief update, I was going to update you on uh, the anniversary of Maximo Yabies, but uh, that was a wonderful thing to recognize, uh, recognize him. Um, it looks like this month we're I'm targeting anyway to close out of the IMBA grant. We've been working on this grant for 10 years, if you recall. And uh, as soon as we get the lighting up on the pavilion and at the invoice of that over to ODOT, uh, he, he visited this week and he's ready to close it out. So that'll be a noteworthy uh, thing. Also hoping to close out the signage and wayfinding travel Oregon grant. Uh, we're uh, purchasing, the, uh, using the funds to purchase the last of the signs. And uh, if you've been noticing, uh, Alpine Stream Construction has been busy pouring the forms and now they're getting ready to put on the, uh, the decorative stone uh, facing as well as uh, put the signs and the stanchions that go with them. Councillor Kenyon mentioned the audit and I, I appreciate her uh, bringing that out. Um, Eric and I did get an informal uh, clean bill of health for the city with some wonderful best practices that, uh, that we'll be able to pass on uh, to the next administration. Uh, lastly, um, I do have a finance director that is uh, scheduled to start in mid-February. Uh, I'll withhold the name for now until I'm sure that they're ready to be announced. 
Um, but then as soon as I get that okay from them, I will post it on the website and uh, let the council know with uh, a brief description of their, uh, their resume. Um, other than that, that's all I have for a CA update. Uh, unless there's questions, Councilor Kenyon, do you have a question? Um, actually, sh yeah, I was wondering is if you would please mute the audience except for the council. Sorry, that's not really a technical question. <laughs> okay, uh, so I'm going to mute everybody. That means, Council, you're going to have to come back and unmute yourself. Okay. Thank you, Brian. Councilor Kenyon, did you have anything else? Well, that was it. Brian, did you have anything else for CA update? Nope, that's all. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, down to 11.1 .1, Charter Review Subcommittee. Is that Councilor Kenyon? Yes. Yeah. Um, we actually were not able to hold a meeting in January because, oh wait, I'm sorry. You're on charter subcommittee, not admin? Yeah, charter subcommittee. Okay. Uh, I'll take that back then. We did hold a meeting in January. And as a matter of fact, we're holding another one um, this coming weekend for a work session from one to four on Sunday. Um, but our subcommittee is off to a great start. We had a wonderful meeting. Um, I want to say we had 12 participants present, but I actually didn't, didn't write that down. Um, but the meeting, we chose a chair and a vice chair and a secretary and started um, all the rules of the meeting and scheduling our future meetings. So looking really forward to this weekend session on this. And that's all I have. Thank you. Next order up is 11.2 RTMP committee. And does anyone want to take the lead on that? That is uh, I can introduce it and uh, then, then uh, I'll, I'll rely on the committee, someone in the committee to talk about the program itself. How's that? Perfect. Uh, this is talking about the 2022 Rural Tourism Marketing Program. Uh, it's, uh, as you know, we get approximately $18,000 each year uh, derived from uh, taxes on hotel stays. Uh, what we're doing here is looking for a motion from a floor to approve the program the committee has been working on for several months, uh, which uh, establishes the criteria method for utilization of the funds and uh, other things associated with uh, entities that come in and ask for uh, these tax dollars. Um, and so this update, we would use this to manage the calendar year 22 funds, make the announcement, let everyone know that it's open for, uh, for applications. Uh, to be decided on the fiscal impact, um, your, your options are to, to approve the pro proposed program as uh, presented, uh, reject it, or direct the committee to further revise the program. We're recommending option one and the motions before you. Do we have a motion from the floor? I will make one. I move that we approve the Oak Ridge calendar year 2022 Rural Tourism Marketing Program. Do we have a second? I'll second that. Councilor, Councilor Spleloff made a motion and Councilor Coker seconded it. Do we have any discussion? No discussion? Um, I think we should share what we discussed. Um, I totally agree. <laughs> So do we have a copy of the forms we've been working, we were working off of? Um, I have to run and get it. It's. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah. I, well, is, is that something we're ready to share right now? Because I feel like. Um, I know Brian emailed it out to all the council. Hey, I'm so sorry. Abby's in the other room and just <laughs> laughing away. 
Go ahead, Councillor Kenyon. Um, I just wanted to inquire if I'm understanding this correctly. The way that the motion is written, it makes it sound like we're only approving this for, for this calendar year. And uh, I was assuming that we did all, all that work to make it more of a permanent, a permanent resolution that's it's been being talked about for eons. Well, when I wrote this agenda bill, there, there was no program yet. So I had no idea what was going to come up with. So oh. council can make it in whatever way they want. Do I hear a friendly am amendment? Yeah, I would like to amend that we. Um... Do you want to amend it or change the motion? Well, <clears throat> I can only suggest a because I make the motion, but I would suggest taking out the uh, calendar year 2022 part. So can you state what you think the new, the amended motion should be? Yeah, amended, it, it would read, I move that we approve the Oak Ridge Rural Tourism Marketing Program. I'll accept that. Thank you. <clears throat> now, is that what we worked on? Is that considered a resolution or a policy? I'd consider it a policy. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. So we would add add the word policy at the end of the uh, at the end of the motion. Agreed. So I move that we approve the Oak Ridge Rural Tourism Marketing Program policy. I'll approve that. Thank you. And I think we need Michelle. Wasn't it Michelle who seconded that? I'm okay with that. It was counselor. Oh, okay. Sorry. Yeah. I'll bring up a couple of highlights. Um, I wasn't involved in this for the last um, several months that they've been working on it, but I did go through it um, word for word. And I really, um, I think it really addressed a lot of the issues that we've had going on in council the last um, couple of years, actually. Um, maybe not every single one, but I think it's a really good, um, way for us to have consistency and um, something for us to reflect back to when we're looking at um, approving um, or not approving um, RTMP funds. And also, um, I believe that this was kind of a boilerplate that was from City of Lowell. Is that correct, Councillor Kenyon? Um, I wouldn't call it a boilerplate. Actually, our committee um, with Kathy and Gary Carl and myself talked about this through several meetings, and we used some of the information from Lowell, but it's, it's definitely not identical. Okay. Anyway. And of course... Um, uh, the three of us, sorry, but the three of us with Brian also went through and finished this up. Yeah. I think some of the highlights would be um, that part right there, Brian. Um, we really tried to look at nonprofit and versus profit um, events and establish a set um, fee that those um, events would be eligible for and then after which point they become a heritage event. But we did um, leave in a little bit of wiggle room for uh, special events that really need that extra funding. And um, yeah, I, I just thought that part was really important, but I'll let the other two go ahead, Councillor Kenyon or, and Councillor Whitney. Um, I'm, 
I'm not really prepared. I don't really have anything in front of me, but uh, I definitely want to say that I'm excited to um, be completed and appreciate that the committee got this finished up and presented. And I think it's a really good product. Um, and not having it open to read from, I don't really, I can't think of anything in particular to point out. Okay, let's hear from Councillor Whitney. Yeah, um, I think the committee did a good job. Um, you know, we had a lot of um, information that other people had worked on as well. Like you said, um, Mira Holston and Gary Carl. Um, and one of the things that I, and we all went through this line by line together, which was great. We really took a lot of time to look at every component of this form and really discussed each piece in a lot of detail and put a lot of thought into making it as fair and equitable and transparent as, pro as possible. Um, there is a section where there's some questions that we ask the applicant that has kind of a scorecard to it so that people can see how we're scoring um, the applications. And that way it can also help um, with the RTMP committee as they look at applicants and, and make recommendations to council. Um, but I don't know if, can you go to that scorecard section? Brian? Should be towards the top. Yeah, Are they're there? right there. Um, so this is one of the things that we worked on where we assigned points to each question and the questions that we thought were most important to the community and for really um, placing a lot of value of, on what the RTMP funds are meant for, we um, placed a higher score on that. So, so like you'll see that somebody can get 10, po 10 points if they, um, project or create an overnight stay. Um, so, you know, and that's really those overnight stays at hotels and our Airbnbs are where the RTMP funds come from. So that's one of the reasons we have a higher score there. So as you go through the questions, you can see that, um, you know, we have scores for each one and it just having it on here, I think um, made this more transparent, not only for the applicant, but for council, for anybody reviewing this in the future. And it really helps um, people see what we value the most. And then we also um, put a little more detail in requesting an after event report or summary and getting that information from people. Um, and that's more towards, I believe, I've, I'm not sure if it's up or down on here, but we did put a lot more or a little more effort into that to um, really get people to let us know how their event were, if there were overnight stays, um, and just really, um, just to be able to give us ideas, you know, of, of what they've done. And, and in through the application process and the form, um, we also created some areas in um, really encouraging people to reach out to local businesses mm -hmm. and work with them and help um, yeah. maybe get somebody to sponsor them to help with advertising and just ways to really pull in local businesses into any events as well, um, just to help expand and, and grow for the whole community and not just a single event. I think we really tried to look at this globally and um, find a way for it to work for a lot of people and in a lot of situations. I totally agree, Councillor Kitney, Whitney. Go Me ahead, Councillor Kenyon. I'm very sorry, that is a very old hand. Okay. I'll take it down. I definitely agree with everything Councillor Whitney said. And I also think that just, um, this was my first time really sitting and um, we only had a couple of long meetings um, that I joined them with, but it was really, um, a lots of um, brainstorming and even thinking about things in the future about putting together, um, I think it was Councillor Whitney's idea to do sort of a resource package for people that are putting events together so that when they come on and they're a new event person, um, that they just have some help in getting that event um, started and kind of where to go for all these different things. And um, I think we're going to move forward with that. That'll be our next step. And I'm pretty excited to see where that goes too. So um, yeah, I'm, I, I really like that we're going to have some consistency. Oh, go ahead. 
Sorry, there is one thing I just remembered I think is really important about this is that uh, we've changed it from having all the uh, submissions turned in once annually to a rolling. We will be accepting applications throughout the year. Right, yeah, right in here. Um, there's no longer a requirement to have it in by a certain date. Um, and we'll be just distributing money on a rolling basis throughout the year. And that's also kind of why it switched from um, being a percentage of how much your total event is to a maximum amount per event. And that's all explained in this document, which will be uh, available, I'm sure, on the city website once it's approved. Yeah, and one of our other parking lot um, ideas was to also create a standard template for the RITMP committee to use for when they're um, evaluating applications. Um, and so that's something that we we have to look at in the future as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. Councilor Spleloff, Bjornsson and Coker, do you have any questions before voting on this? No, I read through it and understand it perfectly. No, I think it looks great. Thank you for your hard work. Yeah, thank you. I think it's great. Okay, well, if you guys, um, if you're ready to vote, let's go ahead and do that. Okay, call Jackie, vote. can you call for the vote? Mayor Hollett. Aye. Councillor Bjornsson. Aye. Councillor Whitney. Aye. Councillor Kenyon. Aye. Councillor Spleedoff. Aye. Councillor Coker. Aye. Thank you. Uh, Brian, will you go ahead and take 13.1? Yeah, I'll give you a, a, a brief introduction and then uh, I would recommend we uh, go into the to the public hearing and and uh, at that point uh, proceed on to the ordinance. So, uh, so as you know, there uh, Oak Ridge is has part of the it's uh, in within city limits is in the floodplain. Um, Oregon has uh, statutes about floodplains and building requirements within floodplains. Um, we've had a floodplain ordinance uh, basically rolled into Ordinance 874, which is our land use ordinance for for the longest time. Uh, but there's a statute change and uh, you have to update. And so um, back in May of this year, or actually last year, uh, DEQ was responsible for sort of uh, enforcement of the floodplain development. And so we had an assist visit uh, back in May. And uh, the representative that was here was very helpful and, and offered uh, several things uh, to improve our program and make it in compliance with the statute. Uh, we've re I've revised the application uh, the, uh, for when someone walks in it in the city hall, if their property or houses are gonna build on us in a floodplain, they have to fill out a different form in addition to the permitting, um, as well as the instruction that goes with it. Um, but the culminating uh, difference is, is when you uh, pass the ordinance that's going to uh, amend or uh, replace the part of 874 that talks about floodplain, which is what uh, the ordinance is down below. Um, this has been to the, uh, the Planning Commission already who approved it and moved to move forward to uh, council. And um, so now it's uh, at the council for a public hearing and then uh, uh, to take action on the ordinance as you see fit. Um, I believe we have uh, our professional planner that we contract with with LCOG, Henry Hurley should be in the audience and he will help uh, with the staff report. Um, but other than that, I'd say it's time that we move into the public hearing if mayor, if you're ready to conduct that. Yep. Okay, so going back to the right page.
All right, 13.1.1. Do we have any conflicts of interest or ex parte contacts? Anything that anyone needs to declare? Hearing none, we're going to go into 13.1.2, open public meeting to discuss the Oak Ridge floodplains developmental development code. Do I need to read this agenda in full, Brian? Uh, let me see here. This thing, uh, no, this was an educational for council. Okay. And then all of the, everything below, I don't need to read that in full either, correct? Correct. Okay. So first up would be, um, let's go into the staff report, 13.1.3. Go ahead, Henry. I'm sorry, I forgot your last name. Henry Hurley. No, no worries. Hurley. Thank, Thank you, you, Mayor. Uh, so Brian gave a great introduction um, of the project. Um, and, and Brian really did all the work. Um, he just asked me to kind of shepherd this through the land use process and public hearings and draft the findings in support of adoption. Um, and that's what you can see um, in your packets. I believe it's exhibit B. Um, so really what I did is just take a look at your comprehensive plan and your development code and the Oregon State Road Planning Goals and just kind of uh, outline some findings that the amendments to the floodplain development code are consistent with your comprehensive plan and the Oregon statewide planning goals. And in particular, uh, the big one here is, is goal seven, that's flood hazard. Um, you know, goal seven is directed to um, by Oregon to protect uh, people and property from natural hazards and floodplain uh, or flooding is a natural hazard. Uh, additionally, uh, goal one and goal two. Uh, goal one is very important. You know, that's uh, public participation. And as Brian stated, these amendments have already been to the Planning Commission. They've held a public hearing on these and accepted testimony uh, from the public. Uh, they recommended that you adopt these and approve them. Uh, and then goal two uh, simply just outlines that actions by local governments should be consistent with their comprehensive plan. And uh, the floodplain amendments that you're considering for adoption tonight are just that. They're consistent with your comprehensive plan and the Oregon State Planning Goals. Um, that's really all there is to it. Um, after you, if you adopt the amendments tonight, uh, what we'll do tomorrow is we'll update the status of these pending amendments with DLCD to let them know that the Oak Ridge has officially adopted the amendments. Thank you, Mr. Hurley. Thank you. And one thing to add is uh, in the event that's not adopted in, in our, our floodplain ordinance is dated and not up to code, uh, it is more difficult for citizens to get flood insurance from FEMA if FEMA is aware of this. So is that, is that a correct statement, Henry? Yeah, really. So this is coming down from FEMA and then they come down DLCD and DLCD implements these at the local level. So if, if, if Oak Ridge wants to continue to be in the NFIP, they essentially have to do as FEMA says with respect to floodplain development standards. Okay, thank you. Yep. Okay, is there anything else on staff report? Nothing else. Okay. Brian, did you have anything else? No, no more here. All right, so we're going to open this portion up to public comment, whereas 13.1.4, statements in favor. Anyone in the public there in the WAC or on Zoom that has any statements in favor? Trudy Hammond, go ahead. I hope that <clears throat> this gets adopted. Thank you. Thank you, Trudy. Anyone else on Zoom or at the WAC for statements in favor of the flood plan? Nothing here. Hearing none, I will go into 13.1.5 statements in opposition for the flood plan. Anyone at the WAC or on the Zoom? Not here. Trudy Hammond, is your hand still up? No, my. <laughs> okay. One more time. Any statements in opposition for the flood plan? All right. Hearing none, 
13.1.6 statements in general for the flood plan. I am not seeing any on the Zoom. Do you have any there at the WAC, Brian? Or I'm sorry, at City Hall, you're not at the WAC? None here. None here. All right, hearing no statements in general, 13.1.7, close the public hearing. And we are moving on to 14.1, Ordinance 939. One sec. Okay, this, this is the ordinance that accompanies uh, the floodplain. Um, and the only difference here I have to point out is uh, there was a uh, something left out. So, so as I mentioned, this ordinance is going to actually repeal and replace a section of ordinance 874, section 1501. So the entire, that entire section comes out and gets replaced with um, the amendment, which was exhibit A in your packet. Um, but as part of that, there's another ordinance, which is also repealed and replaced parts of this 874. Um, that would be written over with this ordinance, but what I need to do is add what you see here, and that's the repealing of Ordinance 915, which is the older ordinance, which is uh, no longer going to be valid. So for housekeeping purposes, I need to be able to cancel and take off the books Ordinance 915 because this supersedes it. So that's the only, it's really just a uh, administrative scrivener's error really, but um, that's kind of what, if passed, I would have to, I would like to add that repealing Ordinance 915 into the uh, into the uh, ordinance itself. So I thought I had an agenda bill here, but um, in short, um, you're able to uh, take the first reading of this and then take a second reading at a, at a second date. Um, you're able to take, uh, to pass it in one meeting, as long as you at least read it by title and then also in whole, uh, or you can read it once and by title only, if everyone agrees. So. Counselors, what would you like to do? I would prefer to do it in one meeting. Counselor Bjarnson? Yes, I agree. I'm, I'm good with doing it in one reading, one title only. I agree as well. Spleeloff and Kenyon, go ahead. Are we going to be allowed to have discussion? Yeah, the agenda bill was left out of the packet for whatever reason. Let me see if I can find it. But um, it, it, but yes, I would. After a motion, there'd be discussion, and I'm trying to find the motion now. So. I have a specific question about one of the whereases that's in this ordinance. I don't know if that means I should ask for it to be read or not. I would be okay with foregoing that as long as we definitely have discussion before we vote. So one sec, let me share the, the actual agenda, Bill. I found the uh, kind of the, I thought I had it, hang on. Which where, whereas did you have a question on Councillor Kenyon? I believe it's the last one on this page. Okay, one sec. On page one? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, whereas the council has considered materials relevant to the proposed amendments, including staff reports, the findings made by planning commission, 
testimony and comments submitted at both public hearings, both orally and in writing. Um, I didn't see any anything that said it was findings made by the planning commission, nor nor any public comments from the here the the prior hearing. I know we didn't have any tonight, but or actually we did have one tonight, but I heard it. So um, were there none or um, did it not get included in this document or did I miss it? There were no comments at the planning commission public hearing. Okay, and then what about the findings made by the planning commission? Is the findings in this document from our planning commission or is it from did this uh, gentleman who spoke earlier, uh, in, did he create those findings? The findings of fact were created by Henry. Uh, the Planning Commission heard those findings of fact, made no changes to them, and just made the motion to forward the approved to forward the whole thing to City Council for approval. Yes. That's okay. Right. Okay. Thank you. So I found the agenda bill. Let me pull it up because it'll make it easier to navigate through this motion process. All right, so your options are to fully and distinctly read the ordinance in two different days before the enactment, read the ordinance by title only if no council requests to be read in full, Enact the ordinance in a single meeting by unanimous vote, provided the ordinance is read first in full, then by title, or you can reject the ordinances. So we're rejecting, or we're, staff recommends uh, one and two. So that, if that's what you want to do, um, option three on the motions would be the proper one. Go ahead, Councilor Kenyon. Um, the way I understand these recommendations, the one and two does not pass it tonight. Correct. Only okay. three, only three would do it. Okay. So, uh, you're recommending one and two and some of our counselors are recommending three. Is that right? Yeah, and I'm fine with three. I've just uh, was looked at council's uh, track record so far and they've never done it in one session. So I weren't sure you were comfortable with that. So I gave you the a way out. Reading it by one and two just gives option at a later date for a citizen to come in if they have an opposition and have a chance to be heard, correct? That's the intent, yes. Yeah. And the, the ordinance has been in the city hall for, for a week as, as required at the front desk and post it to the internet or to the uh, website. So council, if we do number three, that would enact the ordinance tonight. Um, and, and then it would be in effect. If we do one or two, that gives the option. If there isn't a citizen that has an opposition that gives them until the next council meeting to come and be heard. So I am fine with whatever you guys would like to do. I'm still fine with option three. Um, I think this is pretty straightforward of what we need to do. And really it only protects our citizens a little more with um, any sort of floodplain type of um, insurance coverage to have this in place. Yeah. I agree. I'm good with number three tonight. Councilor Spleloff. Yes, I agree because uh, just like uh, Councillor Whitney said, uh, it will allow them to make sure that their flood insurance is up to date and gives them a chance instead of going down the road and we are in the winter months now and things could happen. So I think that uh, we should do uh, number three. Good points. Councillor Kenyon, did you have anything else? Uh, no, I, I would also be okay with number three this evening. Okay. Um, Brian, do we need a motion from the floor to do that? 
Yeah, if some, if you would make the motion and second it, and then I'll do the reading, and then you can do the vote. How's that? Perfect. Do I have a motion from the floor? Uh, yes, I move we enact ordinance nine thirty nine and direct the reading of the ordinance in full and then by title only. I'll second. Thank you, Councillor Whitney, for the motion, and Councillor Squeeloff for seconding it. Do we have any more discussion? Hearing mm -hmm. none. Jackie, go ahead, Councillor Kenyon. I don't think for the issue yet, he's going to do that after the motion. Right? Say that again. I'm sorry. Um, oh, he was going to read it in title, correct? Yeah, I have to read it in full and in title if you're going to oh. do it in one session. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, so let's go ahead and read it in title and then we'll call for the vote. I'm sorry about that. You said read in full and then by title, right? Sorry, the internet connection here just went south. Um, I'm gonna read in full then by title, is that correct, Mayor? Yes. Okay. This is ordinance 939, ordinance repealing and replacing section 1501 of the city of Oak Ridge ordinance 874 floodplain subdistrict and repealing ordinance number 915. Whereas pursuant to article nine and section two of the Oregon constitution and the Oregon charter, the city of Oak Ridge is a home rule municipality with all the powers that the constitution statutes and common law of the United States and state of Oregon expressly or impliedly grant or allow the city. And whereas in the interest of the health, safety and well-being of the citizens of Oak Ridge, the city council has determined that it is in the best interest of the community to have a, an effective floodplain management plan to manage the safe construction and placement of structures in the floodplain subdistrict. And whereas on January 18th, 2022, a notice of public hearing before the Planning Commission was mailed to all affected property owners in compliance with the RS 227.186 and whereas notice of a public hearing before the Planning Commission was posted on December 9th, 2021, notice was posted, published, uh, published and posted in the Register Guard January 8 and 9, 2022, in order to reach persons believed to have particular interest and to provide the public with a reasonable opportunity to be aware of the hearings on the pursuant or proposal pursuant to PAPA 01-21 and whereas the Planning Commission held a public hearing on the proposed amendments to the zoning ordinance of the City of Oak Ridge on January 18th, 2022, adopting adopted recommended findings of fact and recommended to the City Council that the zoning ordinance of the City of Oak Ridge A-74 be amended as presented in this ordinance. Brian, you're gone. How about now? Mayor, you need to. Yeah, let's wait and see if he pops back in. How do you hear me now? There we go. Do you hear me now, Mayor? Yep, we got gotcha. you. Um, given the weakness of this internet connection, does someone else want to take over the reading so you don't uh, lose all this time? Sure. sure. Which whereas were you at? Was it the notice of a public hearing? This uh, was, yes. Okay. Whereas notice of a public hearing before the city council was posted on January 8th, 2020, 2022 at a regular posting locations and January 8th through 9th, 2022 in the local publication. The notice was published, posted in order to reach persons believed to have a particular interest and to provide the public with a reasonable opportunity to be aware of the hearings on the proposal pursuant to PAPA 01-21 and whereas the City of Oak Ridge City Council held a public hearing on the proposed amendments to the zoning ordinance of the City of Oak Ridge on February 3rd, 2020, 2022. And whereas the council has considered materials relevant to the proposed amendments, including staff reports, the findings made by the planning commission, 
testimony and comments submitted at both public hearings, both orally and in writing. Now, therefore, the City of Oak Ridge ordains as follows. Section one, the City Council hereby adopts the findings of fact attached to this ordinance as Exhibit C, Sections two, sections 15.01 of the zoning ordinance of the City of Oak Ridge is hereby rescinded and replaced with Exhibit A attached to this ordinance. Section three, this ordinance shall take effect on the 30th day after its enactment. Read by title only, passed and adopted by a vote of the Oak Ridge City Council on third day of February 2022. Approved and signed by the mayor and the city of Oak Ridge on this third day of February 2022. Jackie, can you call for the vote? Yeah, hold on. Councillor Spleedoff. Aye. Mayor Hollett. Aye. Councillor Coker. Aye. Councillor Kenyon. Aye. Councillor Bjornson. Aye. Councillor Whitney. Aye. Motion passed. Thank you. So we've already done appointments. I believe that concludes this council meeting. Mayor? Yeah, go ahead. We just read it in full. We now need to read it by title only. Oh, I'm sorry. One second. So it's ordinance number 939 and an ordinance repealing and replacing section 1501 of the city of Oak Ridge ordinance 874 floodplain subdistrict and repealing ordinance number 915. Is there anything else on that portion? No, that's the title. I believe we, we vote, vote again, right? We've already voted, yep. Okay, is there any more to do on that ordinance? No, I think we're done. Okay, that's what I was thinking. I thought you read the title first. No, you have to read the title both times. All right, we already did the library vacancy. If I, we don't have any more things on the agenda, let's go into public comment. Nothing at the uh, city hall. Okay, I'm looking through my Zoom and I have one citizen on Zoom with their hand raised. Go ahead, Mr. Barclay. Just uh, real quickly, I wanted to personally thank uh, Mayor Hollis for acknowledging uh, uh, First Sergeant uh, Yabi's. A lot of people don't realize that freedom isn't free. And uh, that's, a, that's a good example of uh, what happens to, to provide all of us the freedoms that we uh, enjoy and often take for granted. Second thing, and I couldn't review it in a council packet because it wasn't in the council packet, um, but as Brian was scrolling through the RTMP um, uh, resolution, policy, whatever, saw a lot of things that, uh, you know, that I really liked. The one that was, uh, that we adopted six years ago that applicants, RTMP committee, and council have ignored and set aside for knowingly ignored and set aside for the last four years of the six years it's been enacted um, were addressed. Uh, but a couple of concerns, and it's probably moot at this point because you've already voted and passed it. The it relies on overnight stays as 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 uh, you know, based on promoters or applicants or so on and so forth. And yes, in a perfect world, it'd be nice to rely on people's personal integrity. But for four years, applicants, committees, and council have ignored the criteria and awarded money to people that were not eligible. It also installed 
the uh, the previous version, I don't know, didn't see it in this version. I don't know if it's been addressed, but it installed the finance director and the city administrator as voting members of a committee that distributes public funds. It might go only be $18,000, but it is public funds. And both of those functions, the CA and the finance director, are ex officio non voting members of the budget committee and we turn around and allow them to vote on distribution $18,000 worth of public funds. So I think the membership needs to be looked at and there needs to be a better verification process on these overnight stays because a promoter or somebody that's receiving the money, what, what does council think they're gonna tell them? May I, we generate overnight room stays? How would they know unless they're one of the four proprietors for, uh, for the lodging facilities in town that that event actually did produce overnight room stays. You ought to be able to take people at, your, at their word, but like I said, you know, this, the, the uh, program being replaced has been largely ignored for four of the six years of its ex existence. So I think that needs to uh, be considered. And it, it may be in the resolute, in the uh, policy or, or the uh, program. I, you know, I could only see what was scrolled through, so I, I don't know. But those two areas, in my opinion, should be addressed. That's all. Thank you, Mr. Barkley. Is there any more citizen comments? Go ahead, Councillor Kenyon. Um, I wanted to respond to Mr. Barclay. Um, just to let you know that the that the committee itself is created by a resolution, which was not updated through this policy that we just created. The policy we just created applies to um, applicants for the RTMP funds, but we do need to consider the one policy that has not been updated yet is the RTMP. Did I just say policy? I'm just, the one written that has not been updated yet is the RTMP one. Ask, um, Mayor Hollett, could we add to a future agenda? Uh, well, actually, I believe the last yeah. place that was put into the administrative committee's hands to work on the um, RTMP, it seems they to be were, Trish was there. Yes, and all resolutions were completed. And I th actually, I wanna say now all but two of them have actually come to council. It's yeah. just been a matter of, um, they haven't been brought forward. They're they're done. Okay. I think we need to add it to an agenda. I will put that on my list right now. Thank you. Is there any more comments from the public or counselors? Uh, yeah. Go I ahead. Go ahead. Um, for some reason, I think there was a couple things that needed worked on with those two. Um, resolutions and I can't remember, I, but I know there was something and that's why we didn't bring them forward um, with the rest, but I can't remember what, what it was. But my, was uh, oh, go ahead. So CA, I, I believe with the RTMP committee, there was an idea that perhaps the scope should increase to include TRT administration. So, but I don't, I, I, it's, been a, it's been a while, I can do the research and figure out what, uh, what the holdup was. I know they were it's been in work for some time and just not acted upon. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I knew there was a reason that we didn't bring them forward. I just couldn't remember. Um, and then my other thing goes back to ordinance 939. Um, we read the resolution in whole, then we voted, then we read it by title. So I'm wondering if we shouldn't just vote one more time just to make sure we have that locked down tight um, so that we voted after we read it by title and we followed both steps and then voted after we took the both steps needed. Um, it's just a suggestion. I don't know if it's needed or not, but um, I, I kind of feel like we might want to just to make sure that we've um, completely met full legal sufficiency for getting that ordinance in place. I agree too. 
Yeah. Councilor Kenyon, do you remember how that? I, I thought we only vote on it one time. Or Brian? Uh, you know, in this, in this age of Zoom, I we can vote on it. I, I see nothing that says you can't vote on it again. But okay. Chief, you want to go back you up? You have something? Title? Go ahead, Chief Martin. Let me unmute there for sorry about that. Uh, I seem to remember something about you had to vote on passing it one meeting and then vote on the actual ordinance on some of these before, but I don't completely remember all that. So just there was, I remember sometime an ordinance was done where it was voted to pass at the single meeting and then voted to actually pass the ordinance. I think that's if you don't have a unanimous vote and you don't um, vote to, to read it in title in full. We can go ahead and read it in title again, if that would make people more comfortable. Well, that's not what my concern was. My concern is um, that we read it in full and then we voted and then we read the title. So I think it should have been read it in full, read the title and then vote. So I, I, feel, I feel like we should maybe just vote again, just to make sure we have this completely locked down um, and that nothing comes back at a later date that we have to fix. And it's just, just my thought, because um, it just kind of makes sense to me legally, but I could be wrong. Um, but I was just, I just thought it would be better to err on the side of caution and, and make sure we have this completely wrapped up. Sure. Councillor Bjarnson. Um, if I remember correctly, Brian did read the title first and then started reading the, the ordinance but then had connection issues and then it kind of delayed things. And then Mayor Hollett finished once Brian came back, but it was read by title before the ordinance was read. That's what I recall, but we can read it in title again, if that's um, just so we cover our basis, if that's. Um... I, I'm fine. I just thought we read, read it in full by reading from the title down and then we voted and then we read the title only. So I, I could be wrong and that's fine. I was just trying to be really careful with that. Um, I'm fine with moving on if everybody feels that it's adequate. Councillor Kenyon. I agree with Bobby. Um, reading it in full that included the title is not the same as reading it by title only, which is part of our motion was to read it first in full and then by title only. And I think Bobby's right that we should vote after that. So let's go ahead and move forward if no one objects and, and vote on it again. Sure, let's just go ahead and read it by title. It's already been read by title only and now. Vote. I called for the vote. So Brian already read it by title. Don't we need another? We have no motion. How, what are we voting? <laughs> Do we need to make another motion? Yeah. That's what I was just going to say. <laughs> One sec, let me pull it up. Let's let, give Brian a chance to pull it up and then someone can make the motion. We can't call for a vote until a motion's made. Yeah. Go ahead, Councillor Kenyon. I'm sorry, I didn't take my hand down. I can do this. Um, I move we enact ordinance 939 and direct the reading of the ordinance in full and then by title only. Do we have a second? I'll second. I'll second. Motion made by Councillor Whitney and seconded by Councillor Spleloff. Is this where you have to read it in the title again, Brian? Uh, technically, it's been read by. OK, yeah. so let's call for the vote. Councillor Coker. Aye. <clears throat> Councillor Whitney. Aye. Councillor Mayor Hollett. Aye. Councillor Spleedoff? Aye. Councillor Kenyon? 
Aye. Councillor Bjornsson. Aye. That motion passes. Thank you all. All right, do we have any more counselor comments or comments from the public? All right, hearing nothing else, our meeting is adjourned at 8.28 p.m. Thank you all for a good meeting. Thank you. Thank have you, everyone. Have a good night.